Greetings, brothers and sisters. A um, couple of gas from JoJo. Weird stuff from him. The other one's on Hunter Biden. I'll get to that in a bit as I move to my other browser. But let's start here first and work our way over there. Uh, JoJo McGrew had to say this. He said this before, and it's always been sucky and stupid. I went to a little school called Holy Rosary Grade School across McClaymont Fire Hall. And all my buddies that came either became a firefighter, a cop, or a priest. I wasn't qualified for any of them, so here I am. But well, I think you could have been a priest. <laughs> I, think, I think you had the potential to be a priest. But, uh, <laughs> you know. Um, I said this before. All these people who voted for Jojo Magoo, would they allow this guy, would they allow their kid to be driven in a bus or a car by this guy, right? If JoJo was at the wheel, would you put your kid in that car? Uh, you know what? I'm sure a lot of these people would because they suck, but if you were a responsible parent, you wouldn't. And so if he can't drive a car and he wears the pens and he's, you know, doing all this kind of stuff, why would you want him to have the nuclear codes and all the other stuff? I mean, I know he has handlers, but still. Biden administration sued for censoring free speech lawsuit accuses president. Karine Jean-Pierre, Mary Poppins of disinformation, disinformation and slew of officials of disturbing amount of collusion with social media firms to quash critical stories. Well, we know this has happened. And eventually it would have to come out, right? They can only suppress things like this for so long. And now that the COVID thing has been a complete dud, like it's a flop. And everyone kind of knows it. Everyone with a pulse. And so, um, remember her? <laughs> the Mary Poppins of... Uh... Wondering is really quite ferocious. It's when a huckster takes some lies and makes them sound precocious by saying them in Congress or a mainstream outlet. So disinformation's origins are slightly less atrocious. It's... <laughs> what a crazy <laughs> effort, right? And so she was in charge of the, she was like the disinformation czar or whatever it was for like a week before they got rid of that. And, you know, the whole thing is just, I've covered today that uh, California has passed a law that any doctor that goes against the government's story of COVID and the medical tyranny that they're pushing is, can lose their license, right? And all this, uh, you know, they're getting desperate. So we're going to work our way back to Jojo Magoo and his son, Hunter. Bethany Frankel continues to sh keep shading Kim Kardashian. Stop feeding the beast. What is this beast that you speak of, Bethany Frankel? So I have to practice what I preach. I said I was going to not feed the beast. I said for us to not feed the beast, starting right now, let's see how long I can last. I'm not going to feed the beast. Okay, don't feed that beast. I don't watch any of it, but it comes through my feed, so I'm going to block or unfollow or just not, I'm not going to feed the beast, so. Don't feed the beast. How many more times can you say that? It's twice. I think that's four times. Let's see how that goes. If anything airs on my podcast, that means that was already something that was fed to the beast. So that's not cheating, okay? She didn't cheat. Anything that airs on my podcast, that like you know wasn't today doesn't count on the non-beast diet because exactly don't go off the beast okay. that was pre-fed to the beast so i'm no longer feeding the beast so whatever comes out in the podcast i don't know how you got limited to just being a part of those housewife shows you're obviously quite brilliant there <laughs> an old episode or old something i talked about like two days ago but the beast diet starts right now. And I don't diet. I don't believe in dieting, but I, I'm going to do a beast diet. Exactly. She didn't believe that. I'm on a Konyashian cleanse. Let's see if my skin looks brighter. My eyes are brighter. We're all clearer. I'm on a Konyashian cleanse starting right now. Right now. Exactly. Let's, why don't you make five or ten more proclamations for how you're going to, um, you know, not feed the beast. Bethany Franco wants people to stop talking about Kim Kardashian, and she's talked about her for months. Okay, um, that's enough of that. Kanye West pushes conspiracy 
that actors were hired to sexualize his kids. My dad would see certain things and say, you know, we should do it this way, we should do it that way. And the people got around my mom and pulled her away, much like, you know, Kim is a Christian, but she has people who want her to go to Interview Magazine and put her ass out while she's a 40-something-year-old multi-billionaire with four black children. And this is what, how fashion wants to, uh, how they want to present her. Okay, so I already saw that bit before. I covered that before. I don't know where they're going at this here. Here he said, I guess, somewhere else. I mean, like actors, professional actors placed into my house to sexualize my kids, he told the Tucker Carlson tonight. I think he's talking about um, Pete's Dave, ba Pete Davidson, the so-called son of an apparent associate. We don't, we didn't even believe that this person was her son because he was way smarter than her, right? Um, so he's saying there were some actors in there who were sexualizing his kids. And, you know, I mean, their kids are being sexualized all the time in that crazy you know, Babylonian ho environment. All these people. And, uh, OMG. Britney Spears, Dad Jamie called me fat, treated me like an effing dog. Now she went on a long rant, and I knew I was gonna, I knew it was gonna be deleted before I got to it, and I wasn't gonna read it all anyway. It was, it was like um, four long posts, you know, each like a page long. Why did you and the family go along with and treat me like an effing dog? What makes you so uh, g damn special? What makes your other daughter so g damn special that you treat me less than an effing dog? Wonder what the secret is? No, we don't, Brittany. You're going to tell us anyway. Well, you all been hiding? Come on, wise father. You want to sit down for four months, expose my body to nurses while showering me like an effing dog, bullying me with their questions, never able to put it on them and ask them questions? Come on, father. You want to sit your granddaughters Maddie and Ivy in a chair 10 hours a day? having people with their head for four months, big security at my door. No, ma'am, you can't leave me. We don't know when you can go. I did nothing wrong. Um, she's kind of going on Kanye-like rants. So here they are. These are all deleted by her. And, I mean, it's just Brittany. There's, there's her wonderful father. Hurricane Ian exposed a flood insurance nightmare for homeowners. Residents in Sable Island, a small coastal community outside Fort Myers, suffered a direct hit. A lack of insurance could prove life-altering for them and many other Floridians. See, it's very easy to get hurricane insurance, real expensive to get flood insurance. And what do you think they're going to call this type of damage? Flood damage, not hurricane damage. And so you have hurricane insurance and you think you're covered because they don't tell you when it comes to, um, you know, a hurricane, it's the flood that's going to do all the damage, and you don't have flood insurance, you only have hurricane insurance. And so, um, there you go. Tulsi Gabbard announced, announces she's leaving the Democratic Party. The former, former congresswoman said the party is now under the complete control of an elitist Kabul of warmongers driven by cowardly wokeness. Um, I don't know where she goes from here, because... Probably not going to run as a Republican, and, you know, it is what it is. Biden warns there will be consequence for Saudi Arabia after oil production cut. The president did not specify what action the U.S. might take, but he indicated that Congress would be involved. Um, yeah, it's nothing you really can do, because once they start selling it to other countries and not in the dollar, America's screwed, right? I mean... He, he has these threats, and he's basically powerless, right? America's broke. And it's got a feeble diaper-wearing leader, right? <laughs> and his crackhead son. So he said this with Jake Tappas. Our reporting, CNN's reporting, and the Washington Post reporting suggests that prosecutors think they could, they have enough to charge your son, Hunter, uh, for tax crimes and a false statement about a gun purchase. 
um, personally and politically. Um, how do you react to that? Well, first of all, I, I'm, I'm proud of my son. He's proud of him. He's proud. He's, he's one hell of a son. The achievements of this guy, right? Well, first of all, he smoked crack and did drugs for a number of years and was able to secure a lucrative income while being a crackhead. He's like one of the most successful crackheads ever, making millions of dollars while using crack and not going to work. Getting paid so getting paid and not going to work and smoking crack. He's a real successful crackhead. In and out of rehab. I mean he successfully banged his dead brother's wife and while he was still married. Like, yeah, I mean that's quite an achievement, right? A guy was able to do that. He secured a job in the Ukraine and never went there. Like, that's pretty great. And then he became a painter, a very successful painter, almost immediately. So the guy, I mean, the guy's just dripping with success. Maybe his biggest achievement is that he went to New York and he met a stripper named Dallas who's from Arkansas. He banged her while he was on crack, impregnated her, forgot all about it, and then she went back to Arkansas, had a baby, and he refused to pay child support because he was unaware. Well, first of all, he didn't want to embarrass his dad. <laughs> the guy's just quite sick. He's got a lot to be proud of. This guy should be a proud father. This is a kid who got, uh, not a kid, he's a grown man. Grown man. He got uh, hooked on, uh, uh, like many families have had happen, hooked on drugs. Uh, he's overcome that. He's a no, nah, he's overcome it. Established a new life. He is, um, uh, I'm confident that he is, what he says and does are consistent with what happens. <laughs> what he says and does is what consistent with what happens. He says he wants to make a lot of money from China or some other foreign government using my name and get me involved so he can smoke crack. He does it. He says it, he does it, and then it's consistent with what happens. He smokes crack, and he, he's with hookers, and then he takes a bath, and he drops his laptop in the tub, and he drops it off at a computer repair shop and forgets to pick it up and ends up getting uh, into the hands of the FBI and ultimately people who want to use it against me. I mean, you know, that happened too. Like, you know, he says and does things, and then things happen. Um, and, uh, for example, he wrote a book about his problems. And was straightforward about it. I'm proud of him. He's so straightforward. He's just so honest. He came along and said, by the way, this thing about a gun, I didn't know anything about it, but turns out that when he made my application to purchase a, a gun, what happened was he said, I guess you get asked, I don't guess, you get asked the question, are you on drugs, you use drugs? He said no. And he wrote about saying no. He wrote about saying no and lying in an honest way. In right. his book. So... I, I, I have great confidence in my son. I love him, and uh, he's on a straight and narrow, and he has been for a couple of years now, and I'm just so proud of him. Our you know, reporting you CNN. Should be, you should be proud. I mean, come on, JoJo. I, mean, I don't even know why this is in doubt. I mean, the guy's uh, just all these accomplishments. So I'm going to talk about the significance of this interview with um, Jake Tappers, the significance of how bad it sucked, right? <laughs> Specifically for you know, the Hunter Biden part here. But I also wanted to say, um, yesterday I made a, a video where I gave an introduction talking about all the glitched out stuff. And when I went to render the video, when you're using some sort of video making software, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, and the video has to render. It has to go from the project you've been working on to a fully made video that's in a format that YouTube will accept, right? And every time I rendered the video, well, first of all, I rendered the video, I put it up on YouTube, and I was like, wow, it, it got uploaded super fast. And it went through the checks. It has to check for copyright and then for anything that would be considered um, not, uh, not ad-friendly. It has to be like, go through these, I guess, bot algorithms or whatever. And so they check for copyright material and then whether something might be offensive to advertisers or whatever it is. And it went through wicked fast, right? <laughs> so I um, saw a comment and the first comment came in and someone said, I usually like your videos, but this one's way too long. And I was like, oh, you know, because I don't, I don't have a complaint department. 
I went to ban the person. I said, wait a minute. It clicked that the person was being sarcastic. You know, it's hard to read sarcasm in the comments. And I went to look at it and it was a one second long video. And so I went through like a two hour long process trying to figure that out because I made a one second video. I, you know, I closed everything down, restarted the computer. I then went to YouTube and, you know, there's all these videos on Premiere Pro and things to do with rendering issues and none of them applied to me, right? I went through all this stuff, right? <laughs> and I updated my, um, you know, Premiere Pro. I, I got into, you know, they've changed the whole, um, uh, Adobe CC used to have a red, you know, Adobe used to have a red uh, icon, but now it's rainbow. So it's hard to find it because it looks so much different than it used to. And, and now I got a whole different interface. And after all that, I had to call somebody from Adobe and get help. It only took them about 20 seconds to figure out what was, was wrong was create in and out points in Premiere Pro. And I was, I created an in and out point that was one second long. And every time I went to make the video, it was just rendering that one second. <laughs> you know, I don't use about 90, 95% of Premiere Pro, right? And once in a while, I click on something or I hit something or I do something. And, you know, something happens to my whatever I'm doing, right? <laughs> Sometimes it disappears all altogether and I have to go in and find the auto-saved version. I mean, there's all kinds of things that happen you guys don't know about because of my total lack of skill on the computer and my, you know, only wanting to know what I need to know. Like, I don't want to know more than I need to know. Like, I don't need all of Premiere Pro. But now I know about in and out points and I have a video in case I ever forget if it happens again and I'll just go to that and save video. But anyways, I'm saying that because it was funny that I had this long 15, you know, minute introduction or whatever it was, 10 minute introduction about all the glitching out that's happening. And then I couldn't get this video up. And so that was that. But let's get into this Hunter Biden thing with Jojo Magoo. And so, you know, Jojo Magoo saying to uh, Jake Tapper, I'm just really proud of him. It's not something Jake Tapper should have accepted. But the news media is so atrocious and late night comedy is so atrocious and they're like shameless, like they don't, you know, they should be completely embarrassed about how bad they are because they've been so bad for so long. And it's just something we've accepted and nobody can do anything about it anyway. I mean, we can make videos and we can do our, we can, you know, talk about it here and get the truth out or whatever, or, you know, deeper level of understanding. But when Jojo Magoo said he's proud of his son and he's been on the straight and narrow and he's been clean for a couple of years. Well, first of all, I don't believe him, right? <laughs> I mean, the guy's been an addict his whole life. And, you know, all this stuff that goes on with that. And there's no sense of, you have to go through like the, you know, some sort of redemptive process. And that would involve the family, Jojo Magoo included, accepting and acknowledging the stripper baby. The, you know, the D Dallas from Arkansas stripper baby. Crackhead stripper baby. Not the baby, but the parents, you know. Mom was a stripper, dad was a crackhead, and they had a baby, right? The baby's fine, or whatever it is, right? It's, you know, it's a toddler now, a young girl. And so it's not her fault her dad's Hunter Biden or her mom's a stripper. And her mom may be great, you know, just because he's a stripper. I mean, she did bang Hunter Biden, so that is whatever it is. While he was on crack, you know, <laughs> I mean, she got some child support money out of it. Who knows, right? Who knows how that all washes out? But there's some redemption and healing and forgiveness and to the American people and to, you know, everybody, you know, that the censorship, the people got deplatformed, New York Post, who was trying to post this story that turned out to be true, all this stuff, you know, the way that they handled this before the election. I mean, what Jake Tapper should have grilled Jojo Magoo about is, okay, even if your son's clean now, for so many years, he was a crackhead, a drug addict, and a degenerate. And he was making millions of dollars off of foreign companies not doing any work for them because he was smoking crack all the time. And if you hear his story, the book that Joe Jumagu talked about, and he talked about this on Jimmy Kimmel. Jimmy Kimmel got on his knees and serviced Hunter Biden instead of grilling him about, you know, his crack money and his all this stuff. 
I mean, all this money that he got from these companies. And he was smoking crack and, you know, seedy, uh, like apartments. And he was in like West Hollywood, one of those really rundown places with all those sort of flop houses. And you know, there's these places that people use drugs, right? And, you know, he's a, a high profile person, hotel rooms and all these, you know, skeezy people coming in and out, drug dealers and, and hookers and drug users and things. I mean, track crackheads. And he had all these friends who were crackheads. He had no time to do a job. Like you can't smoke crack and then you know, do a good job full time somewhere, right? And so he was receiving this money. What was he, if he wasn't doing work, then what was he providing for these big foreign cor corporations, you know, in, in the Ukraine and China? And now the Ukraine and China are so important and Hunter Biden has ties to them. They were supplying him with crack money. And what was he supplying them with, right? Jojo Magoo is connected to that. And so he might say how great Hunter Biden is, but, you know, Hunter Biden was providing milk for his family, right? He was bringing in, you know, this uh, money that Jojo Magoo couldn't bring in. You know, he was making contacts and selling influence. And the second thing Jake Tapper should have asked him was that the election's been tainted because this story was, you know, and this was CNN uh, more than anybody else, but all of them, MSNBC and CNN, but all of them, even Fox News, didn't cover it at first. They pretended it was fake news, but Hunter Biden's laptop is hard drive and all the files that are on it, it's still like, you know, there's things that are, are rumored out there, or, you know, things that are out there that aren't being discussed, they're pretty depraved. And that was a huge October surprise that would have destroyed any chance of Jojo Magoo getting elected. Like, he wouldn't be able to fake it if that story came out. And all of them combined, all of them colluded to withhold that story, which affected the outcome of the election. And so he should have asked him about that or talked about it because they all did that, right? And just to let him sit there and go, I'm so proud of him, he's clean now, right? I mean, he has a gun charge, plus... I don't know if it's the same gun um, issue that he had before, but his brother's widow, he was banging. He left his wife for his brother's widow. And, <laughs> you know, which is effed up in itself. And he was so depressed, she took his handgun from him because she thought he was going to kill himself. And she threw it away in a trash can across from a high school. And it was just sitting there. Some homeless guy got it. And the Secret Service and all these other people got involved high level high level governmental officials you know cuz that's a a crime and a you know dangerous thing to do especially for a guy who campaigned on gun control like Jojo Magoo so these were all questions that should have been asked right and he didn't do any of that i mean Jake Tapper of course he didn't we know that cuz we've accepted it or we've you know it's just okay this is what news media is now but it shows you how far everything's fallen how depraved everything is how low it is because that's bad, right? That's, you know, horrible journalism. Only spirituality will save this world. It's Paul Romano, definitely important for the apocalypse and the ascension. Everyone have a blessed day and be grateful.